Falling in the rain is mine A pregnant city with a Catholic mind Starts those sheets for the birdhouse jail All mescaline when the past is stale Pale, Dublin in the rain is mine Oh, he's my next door neighbour. Yeah, I live next door to him. I've known him, I mean, I've known him pretty much since he was born, I think. And um, I used to babysit him when I, was, uh, when I was in need of cash when I was younger. You used to babysit people? I used to babysit the two people that I was allowed to have under my responsibility. Yeah, I didn't trust them to babysit them again. And the radio's all available, the way model. I think it was just coming back around, guitar music. Like, people who are in the know want to do what's not in fashion. You know, this is that classic saying of <clears throat> people selling their guitars and getting turntables, people selling their turntables and getting guitars. Just kind of swings and roundabouts, and I feel like, at the moment, I think, like, as we were talking about with The Fall as well, I think for some reason, everything sounds like The Fall now, you know? Or, like, that's what the, that's what the journalists will say. If the Fall had kind of, like, gone down, like, you know, um, and, and been recognised for how good they were and, and, and potentially influential they were at their time, which they weren't really, like, you know what I mean, they, they never... You know the way people call them, like, the, the biggest band that never made it big? If they had made it big, you know, in that sense, I don't know if the, if the kind of, like, if the, if the comeback to it would be as strong, you know what I mean? But it's the fact that, that it took so long, like, there's, there's an element of it that was missed out that's still being digested, and the digestion of that part of the fall that people didn't understand is coming around and, and landing at the same time as the actual just normal trend of it is, is coming back. So it's a really, really strong comeback at a particular kind of music, you know? Is it too real? The winter evening settles down. The brews and beat up open sky, six o'clock, the city in the I like the, uh, the element of, of like repetition in a, in a sort of like uh, being used in a, in a not pop punk, in a not pop way, you know what I mean? Like the, the element of repetition in the sense that you could just say something that's, you know, that kind of like sounds superficially um, it sounds mundane or just insignificant and then if you keep repeating it it begins to like lose its meaning and then take on various other meanings and, and I mean when I say take on other meanings take on whatever meanings you as a, as a listener want to project onto it becomes more and more of a kind of like blank slate for you as a listener to put your own ideas onto you know what I mean if you, like if you say a name over and over again if you say the name of like say the, the word lamp a hundred times obviously it begins to lose its meaning and then maybe you know, the 60th time it takes on another meaning and stuff like that. But I think you start to put your own thoughts, your own memories, and, and maybe even your own subconscious onto the name Lamp. You know what I mean? The way we work now and the kind of, the way we kind of mix our ideas is just, it's just inherently tied to uh, lit literature and poetry because you know, I think like the greatest influence that any musician can take is from exterior, uh, exterior forces. You know, if you're only influenced by music, you're only going to get so far. Whereas if you bring in something that has nothing to do with music, it's always going to add in. It's the best way to be authentic. You know, is to add in something that's not like a musical uh, influence. Yeah, I think any external force, like you know what I mean, mm. like uh, like poetry is just ours, or literature is just ours. But it could be anything. It could be art. It could be Basquiat. You know, we f yeah, film or just conversation, I mean, uh, or drugs, you know, any kind of uh, external thing. But I think as well, uh, the, re the reason we feel, feel it's important to sort of like keep reading and stuff like that is just to keep stimulating the creative uh, part of your brain. Yeah, are you? Um, yeah, definitely. Ireland in general, I suppose. Yeah, I think Ireland in general. I don't know. Like I, I see, I see the romanticism in Dublin. Like every time I go back, but that's because we don't spend that much time there. You know, spend a weekend there, walk around, go for a picnic in Phoenix Park, and the, like the beauty is there. And like Dublin's dis Dublin's disappearing in a sense that like, you know, it's kind of harder to find um, it's harder to find a business that's been owned by the same people for thirty years. You know, it's just gentrification, but. Um, it's got the same. It's got the same sort of like facelessness happening to it that um, anywhere that has like a kind of influx of money gets. You know what I mean? 
I think we've had a conversation similar to this before, where Roy Keane is mentioned, but uh, it's definitely not him because no, it's not Roy Keane. He'll probably end up knocking us out. Um, yeah, maybe maybe get more uh, <coughs> more placid like after a few points, but yeah. I highly doubt it because he's from Cork, isn't he? Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm tempted to say yes, yeah, but I think my heart is going with Ronnie Drew. Ronnie Drew, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like. I'd probably rather be mates with mates with Yates. Mm. Uh, but I'd rather be mates with Yates, but uh, I, don't, I don't think he'd be good crack like, for a mm. few points, you know what I mean? Ronnie Drew was built <laughs> and put on this earth to have points with, like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. No, no doubt about it. Can you imagine those beautiful, beautiful blue eyes looking up at you and asking you to buy him another round? Like, yeah, yeah. How could you say no?